The Prayer of Jabez, Breaking Through to the Blessed Life, is an inspirational book published in 2000 by Bruce Wilkinson. In the book, Wilkinson encourages Christians to invoke this prayer for themselves on a daily basis. I challenge you to make the Jabez prayer for blessing part of the daily fabric of your life. To do that, I encourage you to follow unwaveringly the plan outlined here for the next 30 days. By the end of that time, you'll be noticing significant changes in your life, and the prayer will be on its way to becoming a treasured, lifelong habit. What is the prayer of Jabez? We find it in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And I believe in the book of Chronicles, this is the first time we break away from the list of names to an actual narrative, an actual statement about something. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His, mothers had, his mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Well, that's the prayer of Jabez. You notice it's not very long. The book about the prayer of Jabez became an international bestseller. It was about 90 pages long. It topped the New York Times bestseller list for a number of weeks. It sold 9 million copies in a short period of time. The popularity of the book led its publisher, Multinoma Press, to extend the line to a number of derivative works targeted at niche audiences as well as to offer books in audio and video formats. They also authorized, authorized a wide variety of official Prayer of Jabez merchandise, including keychains, mugs, backpacks, Christmas ornaments, scented candles, mouse pads, and a framed artist's conception of Jabez himself. A line of jewelry was introduced in 2002. Three versions of the book were rewritten for children, one each targeted at preschoolers, age 12 year olds, and teens. Well, this brief 92 page book is supposed to be an exposition and application of this relatively obscure passage from the Old Testament in 1 Chronicles. The underlying theme of the book is prayer and God's willingness to answer our prayers and bless our lives. Wilkinson, the director of Walk Through the Bible Ministries, claims that he has been praying this prayer for over 30 years and as a result has seen God do some amazing things. Moreover, he insists that anyone who prays this prayer can expect the supernatural. Part of Wilkinson's book can leave the impression that prayer is primarily a matter of finding the right magic words. If you repeat those magic words over and over, you will eventually get what you want, or at least be blessed. Well, what does Jesus say on the subject of prayer? He says, avoid vain repetitions. He does say, don't stop praying, don't give up on praying. And the Apostle Paul says, continue, pray continually, or pray without ceasing. We'll notice some things about the prayer of Jabez in the scripture and of Jabez the book here in just a moment. Paul Harvey told about a three-year-old boy who went to the grocery store with his mother. Before they entered the grocery store, she said to him, now you're not going to get any chocolate chip cookies, so don't even ask. She put him in the cart, and he sat in the little child's seat while she wheeled down the aisles. And he was doing just fine until they came to the cookie section. I don't know why she went down the cookie aisle. He saw the chocolate chip cookies, and he stood up in the front seat and said, Mom, can I have some chocolate chip cookies? She said, I told you not even to ask. You're not going to get any at all. So he sat back down. They continued down the aisles, but in their search for certain items, they ended up back in the cookies aisle. Mom, can I please have some chocolate chip cookies? She said, I told you that you can't have any. Now sit down and be quiet. Finally, they were approaching the checkout lane. 
the little boy sensed that this might be his last chance. So just before they got to the line, he stood up in the seat of the car and shouted in his loudest voice, In the name of Jesus, may I have some chocolate chip cookies? Everybody round about just laughed. Some even applauded. And according to Paul Harvey, due to the generosity of other shoppers, the little boy and his mother left with 23 boxes of chocolate chip cookies. Well, he was persistent in asking, wasn't he? And we are told in Scripture to be persistent in prayer, not to give up praying. But we do have to realize that prayer is not said, and it's not repeated. <coughs> It's not a set of repeated words to manipulate God into blessing us. Prayer is our communication with God. We will not benefit from saying the prayer of Jabez over and over. Any prayer that we might pick, whether in Scripture or just one you like somewhere, our task is not to just say that prayer over and over. For one thing, we might say it without thinking much about what we're saying. But we can certainly benefit from learning the prayer of Jabez from learning what he prayed. We do need to remember that Jabez prayed to God. He prayed to the one true God. That is important. And we know some things that Jabez prayed. He prayed that God would bless him indeed. He asked for God's blessings. Let's keep in mind the setting here. This is after the exile, after the people of Israel are brought back from the years of captivity in Babylon. Don't you know they felt down at that point? The temple had been destroyed. They had been away. Really, they had been gone 70 years. Those who had left, for the most part, were dead. But Jabez prays. He prays an effective prayer in his case because he prays to God. He asks God to bless him. You know, where do our blessings come from? One of my favorite little preacher stories is about the person who entered the parking lot of a very busy shopping center. They were in a hurry. The parking lot was full. And they said, God, please provide a parking space for me close to the store. About that time up ahead, somebody backs out. Says, God, never mind. One just opened up. Why did they pray to God, <laughs> asking for such a thing, if they weren't going to give God credit if it was granted? <clears throat> Too often, we may pray to God and ask his blessings, but then when they occur, we don't give God the credit. <clears throat> One of the most popular religious phrases of our nation today is, God helps those who help themselves. You all have heard that, haven't you? God helps those who help themselves. Well, do you realize that in a nationwide poll conducted by Barner Research Institute, now this was back in 1996, 82% of Americans said they believe that the phrase, God helps those who help themselves, is a direct quote from the Bible. It's not. Actually, the saying comes from Aesop's fables. The story goes like this. A wagoner was driving a heavy load along a very muddy way came to a part of the road where the wheels sank halfway into the mire, and the more the horses pulled, the deeper the wheels sank. So the wagoner threw down his whip and knelt down and prayed to Hercules the strong, O oh, Hercules, help me in this hour of distress. But Hercules appeared to him and said, Man, don't sprawl there. Get up and put your shoulder to the wheel. The gods help them that help themselves. In other words, one of the most popular religious phrases in America isn't biblical, it's pagan. We need to remember that blessings do come from God, and God can provide what we need. He is able, He is willing, He can grant our requests if it is His will. There's a story that goes like this that uh, a Mr. Jones died. He goes to heaven. He's greeted by Peter, as is always, that always happens in stories like this, doesn't it? He's shown around heaven. He sees angels, choirs, goats, the gold street, the like. 
But Mr. Jones notices a large warehouse building and asks to see it. Well, Peter suggests that he might be better, it might be better if he didn't see it, but Mr. Jones insists. Finally, Peter relents. Peter opens the door. Mr. Jones sees a huge warehouse filled with row after row of shelves full of white boxes with bows. Each box has a name on it. Mr. Jones asks if any has his name on it. They go to the J aisle and find one with his name. Mr. Jones opens it. As he looks inside, Jones has a moment of instant recognition and then lets out a deep sigh like the ones Peter had heard so many times before. Inside the white box were all of the blessings that God had wanted to give to him while he was on earth, but he hadn't because Jones had never asked. Look at some comments on this story with true words. Even though there is no limit to God's goodness, if you didn't ask him for a blessing, yesterday, you didn't get all that you were supposed to have. Jabez also prays that God would enlarge his territory. Now, that's kind of an interesting prayer. Uh, <clears throat> but he prays that, and we're told that God answered his prayer. Also, he prayed, let his hand be with him. He was praying for God's protection. James Dobson understood the importance of God's hand in his life. He illustrated once from a story from his childhood. He said, my dad loved me. I've known that from my earliest moments of awareness. I'm told that when I was a small child, perhaps three years of age, we lived in a one bedroom apartment. My little bed was located beside the bed of my parents. Dad said that it was not uncommon during that time for him to awaken at night and hear a little voice whispering, daddy, daddy. He would answer quietly, what, Jimmy? And I would reply, hold my hand. He would answer quietly, or he would reply, I lost my place. My dad would reach across the darkness and grope for my little hand, finally engulfing it in his. He said the instant he encompassed my hand, my arm would become limp and my breathing deep and regular. I'd gone back to sleep. You see, I only wanted to know that he was there. Jabez prays, let your hand be with me. He wanted to know that God was there. And when we pray, we recognize, we acknowledge that we believe that God is there. That he hears our prayers, that he will answer our prayers. Jabez also prays to keep him from harm or evil. Jesus, in his example prayer, said, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Well, Jabez said his prayer, and his prayer was answered. It just says, though, God granted his request, pure and simple. There is a story of a wonderful elderly Christian lady <clears throat> who had very little money and lived in a rundown house. But despite her situation, she was always giving praise to the Lord. Her only problem was with the old man who lived next door. He was constantly trying to prove to her that there was no God. One day, as the old man was walking by this lady's house, he noticed her through an open window. She was kneeling in prayer, so he crept over to the window to see if he could hear. She was praying, Lord, you've always given me what I needed. Now you know that I don't have any money, I'm completely out of groceries, and I won't get another check for a week. Oh Lord, somehow, will you please give me some groceries? Well, the man heard all he needed. He crept away from the window, ran down to the grocery store, and bought a basket full of groceries. He then raced back to the woman's house, set the bags down by her door, rang the doorbell, and hid behind the shrubs. Well, you can imagine how the woman reacted to seeing those groceries. She threw her hands over her head and cried out, Thank you, Jesus. You answered my prayer. I was out of food, 
and now you have overflowed my shelves. About the, at that time, the old man jumped out and said, I've got you now. I told you there was no God. It wasn't Jesus who gave you these groceries. It was me. The woman lifted up her arms again and shouted, Oh, thank you, Jesus. You sent me all this food and you made the devil pay for it. <laughs> when we pray, we pray in faith, God will answer our prayers. Jabez's prayer says to post-exilic Israel that God does answer prayer. Martin J. Selman said the point is not simply that he prayed, that is Jabez, but that God granted his request. I think John Mark Hicks gives a good summary of this text. His summary is about as long or longer than the actual text. This story set in the genealogical list of Judah's reflects God's gracious promise to hear the prayers of his people, avert disaster, enlarge their territory, and bless his people when they cry out to him. Jabez epitomizes the situation of, post, of the post-exilic community. They were born out of pain. And they cry out to God for peace and rest. The assurance of this story is that God will hear the prayer of faith and graciously respond. The hope of the post-exilic community is God's gracious disposition. God will give his people rest. Three ministers were discussing the importance of prayer and the appropriate positions for prayer. As they were talking, there was a telephone repairman work, work, working on the phone system in the back of the room. One minister said that he felt the key was in the hands. He always held his hands together and pointed them upward as a form of symbolic worship. The second minister suggested that the real prayer was conducted on your knees. That showed humility and reverence. The third said that they both had it wrong. The only position worth the salt was to pray while stretched out flat on your face. That was, after all, the position Jesus took while praying in the garden. <clears throat> By this time, the phone man just couldn't stay out of the conversation any longer. He spoke up and said, I found that the most powerful prayer I ever prayed was while I was dangling upside down from a power pole 40 feet above the ground. I think you would pray fervently in that position, wouldn't you? Help me get out from here. Whatever our position physically in prayer, let us remember the power of prayer. And we can learn some things from Jabez's short little prayer. He prayed, and God answered.